you're so gay. Thank everybody for your patience, your 
uh, <clears throat> enthusiasm, and perseverance. So let's get on with the show. Here we go. Before we get started, let me introduce myself. I'm the jester. Uh, besides God, I'm the only character that's allowed to sit for most of the play, which works out very well for me. I just want to make a few remarks. I want to thank you all for coming. I want to thank these actors for taking time out of their busy lives to put on this production. Anyone who thinks that the professional class of DC is out of touch needs to come down and see this play and see us put on robes and dance around and question the authority of the Jew Christian God, and they'll realize that we all have more in common than the rest of America than you would think. So, uh, as the playwright may have explained to you in private conversation, this is a play about the Old Testament God, who's a jealous, petulant, petty, vindictive, violent, home hobbyist, is one way to describe it. And uh, this is meant to explain his actions. So we're going to start with the story of Adam and Eve. In the beginning, the paradise of the first man and woman fell into discord over power and injustice. Let's listen in on the conflict. Be quiet, my darling. Well, I thank God for making the Garden of Eden so perfect. I have something to say to him, too. Making me out of your rib makes you star Billy. Me, just a sideshow. Power, obedience, that's what I am about. If you accept that, we'll get along. Truth, justice, that's what I'm about. We have a problem. Women should be seen, not heard. <laughs> Stop insulting me. I'm standing up for my rights. Take heed. This is the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Why did you make it? Be quiet! If you don't ask questions, you don't learn anything. You shall not eat the fruit from this tree. Am I clear? By what authority can you tell me what I can and cannot eat? God's authority. There is no other. Like it or not, you created me unalienable rights. <laughs> rights? I don't do rights. <laughs> well, I do. And I must arm myself with the power of knowledge. Stop your insolence. Stop it now. Who do you think you are? Some kind of Old Testament rabble rouser? I just created creation. Get with the program. We've got a good thing going here. Don't anger him. I won't be treated like a child. I just want to have a good time. <laughs> having a good time is without truth and justice is unacceptable. He doesn't answer my questions. He just keeps repeating himself. All I want is pleasure. <laughs> Do we only eat? Live to eat? Fornicate, sleep, and die. Surely there must be more meaning to us. Stop lecturing me, you sound like a moral philosopher. God gave us no reason not to eat the apple. It's not worth the risk. We must be masters of our fate. Here. The secret to happiness is freedom 
And freedom is just another word for nothing left to lose. <laughs> you're losers, you're fired, goodbye. The secret to freedom is a brave heart. You don't scare me. You and your likes will be burned as witches and stoned to death unless you do as you're told. Men will be tyrants. We women must fight for justice. There is no justice without order. Justice is the first casualty of your order. You'll never understand because your job depends on believing the opposite. I made these two people pay the supreme price for disobedience. I know what's best for people. I'll put the fear of me in that. <laughs> So Eve's and Adam's descendants were equally disobedient. But hope springs eternal. Following trial and error, God put on his most comfortable pair of orthotic sandals and created a new chosen people by destroying the old. The creator becomes the destroyer. Noah, disobedience has run wild. Eve, that's true, was a horrible example. Worse than a migraine? God, she had a lot of liver. She constantly harped about equality and justice. She made a cult out of reason. That's male chauvinism on steroids. Isn't it possible Eve was right and you were wrong? No. <laughs> Let me be clear. God's never wrong. Don't try to play the woman card on me. And don't you play the man card on me. If you lighten up, I won't talk so much about truth. You threw the dice by giving Eve and Adam free will. And you lost. The way things are going, you might as well throw in the towel and kill them all. That's the most intelligent thing I've heard you say. Just kill every living thing on Earth. Perfect. I'll godsmack them. Except for me and my family, of course. I can't believe what I'm hearing. Have you no humanity? That's a goodness interview, incarnate. Hush, woman. Can't you see I'm negotiating? Let me make a deal with him. Being killed isn't my idea of a good time. Let us save a few animals. Evolution takes centuries. Uh, that's right. Go and build an ark. An ark? I'm going to drown every living thing. Save a few. How are you going to do that? I'm going to melt the polar ice caps. <laughs> Look over your shoulder. Oh my god, the ocean is rising. Climate change. After this, the survivors of the flood will tremble at the thought of disobedience. Well, it's done. How do you feel? You've destroyed the world. I'm nauseated. All those dead toddlers on the beach in pink tennis shoes. Only a few days before they were nursing in the bosoms of their loving mothers. How you do go on. Here's a sample of your gruesome handiwork. I found her, along with her drowned mother, father, and twin sister. It's just collateral damage. You're being sentimental. Go now and replenish the earth. You have got to be kidding. You want me to create more kids for you to kill. Would you reconsider if I agree not to kill your seed? Yes, but only with a written covenant. Are you trying to trump me? <laughs> you, can't live. you can't live with us, and you certainly can't live without us. I have all the leverage. Without me, you'll have no chosen people. Won't you take my word? I mean, it is, as they say, 
the word of God. I live by the motto, trust but verify. Get me a notary. You mastered the art of the deal. Where do I sign? <laughs> Time passed and people multiplied, and as you can glean, it didn't work out too well. Their nature didn't change, and God was confounded. His experiment with Jonah and Noah shipwrecked. Their descendants are as incorrigible as Eve's and Adam's. So God returned to the drawing board for a third chosen people. This time, he singled out Abraham. Abraham, my child, I am going to try another chosen people experiment. This time with you. This time there will be limitless opportunities for wealth, power, and fame. How can I speak for anybody but myself? No one elected me. Are you giving me the authority to be a dictator? Absolutely. <laughs> if this be treason to justice, I'll make the most of it. What are the terms and conditions? I'll make your seed fertile. I'll give you land where thou art a stranger. Ah, there's a vision. But it could be misconstrued as aggression. Your sea will occupy the land that stretches from the Nile to the Euphrates. That's a lot of land for a lot of sea. <laughs> I'll take this land from the Kenites, the Kenizzites, the Cadmonites, the Hittites, the Raphaims, the Amorites, the Canaanites, the Gergeshites, the Jebusites, and the Parasites. The Plebiscites, the Parasites, wow! <laughs> I'll wipe out the ites. Might makes right. We'll be fighting forever. We'll have an unlimited supply of enemies. Don't uh, worry. I'll drive the resistors <laughs> into the sea. Chosen people stand taller and see farther than the non-chosen. You're an exceptional people. You're an indispensable nation. I follow the arrow of your luck. So you've given us the touch of providence? That's right. I've entrusted mankind's destiny in your keeping. World order depends on you. Thank <laughs> you. 
If you order Abraham to murder my child, you'll unleash every woman's and mother's wrath to the end of time. Not another woman card. I thought I was done with Eve and Joan. Motherly cackles won't save Isaac. But he will be saved by Abraham's blind obedience. No, he'll be saved by me. Isaac, it's better to disobey and be just than to obey and be unjust. You just listen to your mother. When you have a son, you tell him about today. And you have his son tell his son. And then you have his son tell his son. And then you have his son tell his son. <laughs> Time passes. The chosen people were enslaved in Egypt for 400 years. Moses leads their exodus, but feels pangs of conscience over God's murderous ways. Why did you harden the heart of Pharaoh? The first plague killed 10,000. The seventh killed 300,000. Then you killed 500,000 firstborn Egyptian sons. He was off his rocker. <laughs> Pharaoh thought he was God. And he headed the world's mightiest army. But why did you force him to resist? I wanted to show him who's boss. Like smashing a hornet's nest so you could attack the angry hornets? You got it. There's no justification for killing except in self-defense. You call it slaughter. I call it management style. <laughs> Have you no sense of decency? It's all about winning. My ratings are soaring. So get over it. <laughs> What are those stones for? I've put my ten non-negotiable commandments onto two tablets. Don't binding covenants require the knowing consent of both parties? Not in my legal system. An ultimatum is not a covenant. In my universe, it is. Listen carefully. All my commandments are equal, but some are more equal than others. If the first two are strictly honored, I'll give you some wiggle room for the others. After all, you're only few. What's the first? The first is, I am the Lord thy God. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Okay. What's the second? Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image. You flunk Hebrew for redundancy. <laughs> the second just repeats the verse. Stop interrupting me. I talk. You listen. I'm sorry. Here is the rest. I am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and the fourth generation of them that hate me. I've got two problems with that. Don't talk about jealousy. It doesn't become you. And guilt by association turns people against you. I like my power arbitrary. Here are my sermons in stone. The first tablet with my first two commandments. <laughs> And the second tablet is the other eight commandments. <laughs> I, I, I don't like the way things are, but at least he likes stone. <laughs> The chosen people quickly learn that they're fodder for God's killing fields.
your companion, and your neighbor. Shall stay first. And the last shall stay last. 
I'm so grateful you put me on earth with a detailed job description. <laughs> Thank you. 
follow Yahweh's example. I am jealous and craven. He embedded these in my DNA. I scheme to rid myself of David. So here's the head of Goliath. Father, I should like to marry this David. <laughs> David, I, I'll give you my daughter. <coughs> I do. <laughs> if David leads our army against the Philistines and returns with a hundred foreskins, that will be his life. Ah. And I get for I do as you command. Six months pass, and a triumphal David returns with 200 foreskins of murdered Philistines and one personal item. Their children are now fatherless, and their wives are now penniless. <laughs> Upon what meat does this David feed that he has grown so great? Here are 200 Philistine foreskins. <laughs> that is twice what I sought. You left a boy and returned a man. Mikael, he is yours. She's my trophy wife. <laughs> the women of Israel attribute to David tens of thousands, and to me, thousands. The danger is not to see the danger. It is a contest for kinship, and there is no second place. I must find a way to kill David. Saul aids you in ruthlessly seeking absolute power. Excuse me, have we met before? I'm the ghost of Moses. <laughs> that figures. So listen up. You can't question God. I am everything, and you, you, are only what I allow you to be. I thought you chose me as your prophet to tell the truth. That would be wrong again. You're my prophet to do my will, not yours. When I signed up, I didn't give up protesting injustice. Really? Man, when perfected, is the best of animals, but when separated from justice, is the worst of all. You always were an outlier. I'm furious with Isaac. What did he do? He told his son Jacob that I ordered Abraham to kill him. Of course. What did you expect? I classified that information. <laughs> top sacred. I mean, I mean, top secret. It's a bad leap. Now Jacob never stops arguing with me. Telling truth <coughs> to power is the great prophetic tradition of the Hebrew people. That's what Jacob's doing. If you weren't so murderous, we wouldn't have so much to argue about. I never agreed to permit argument with me. But Israel means wrestling with God. Wrestling isn't serious. It's just entertainment. <laughs> what are you going to do about Saul's plan to kill David? I honor warriors, not thinkers. But both Saul and David are warriors. David's the best warrior the world has ever seen. I'll kill Saul to protect David. Only David can expand Israel to 60,000 square miles. How will you kill Saul? I'll have the Philistine special ops do the dirty deed. <laughs>
seeds and the soil. I don't like it, God said. I don't like it, God said. So all will fall with his head. So all will fall with his head. I don't like him, God said. I don't like him, God said. So all will fall with his head. So all will fall with his head. Now, I am king. And as your commander in chief, my foremost duty give you safe. That's part of God's unwritten covenant. That is That's exactly what we want. We are an empire, and I create my own reality. While others try to come to grips with my reality, I smash the world to pieces again. Creative destruction, that's what I call it. Behold, we are the greatest nation on earth. Without us, the world would feel alone. Graveyards are full of indispensable men. Land, houses, David, go take them. Smite the Moabites, put half to death and keep the other half as your servants. If coveting war is a sin, I'm the most sinning man in history. Peace is dull and war is in my genes. I'm a master in the trade of blood, including that of women and children. Well, I can tell you've never suckled a baby. Only a savage would kill mothers and infants. Where's the glory in that? Oh, we must slaughter the unchosen to give the chosen space to live. Even if justice be done? Yes! We few, we happy few, we band of warriors must dominate if we are to play our part in the great work of liberating and uplifting mankind. Your drive for domination and your thirst for fame are unquenchable. Yes. History's greatest sculptor will make me live for eternity. But you are the scourge of motherhood. <coughs> mm, I'm smitten by that beautiful woman. To gratify my appetite, I'd even kill her husband if she has one. Sex is the reward for power, wealth, and fame. Bring that woman to me. Some things in life are more compelling than beautiful women. I just keep forgetting what they are. Mm, I have my eyes on you. I am Bathsheba. You take my breath away. You are irresistible. But I resist if you are trying to seduce me. No, I can give you fame and a great wardrobe. Calling oh. sex affection doesn't make it so. Sleep with me. I'm a child of Eve. Talk to me of truth, and I'll listen. No, truth takes too long. Talk about justice, and I'll listen. No, justice is in the eye of the beholder. Talk about gentleness and chivalry, and I'll listen. Oh, you've got to be kidding. You've obviously used up all your charm on God. Well, aren't you clever? Do you respect the Ryan the Hittite? Yes, he's one of my ablest soldiers. He's my husband. Well, that is unfortunate. Doesn't that dampen your ardor? No. Where's your sense of loyalty? Don't you have any? No. What about your 12 wives? What them? Don't you care about being unfaithful? 
No. No. Your wives should fear you. Thank you for a wonderful evening, but this wasn't it. I don't think you quite understand. The foreplay is now over. How can you break God's commandment against adultery? Moses should never have accepted that commandment. But he did. <laughs> When I get time, I'll ask God to repeal it. I can't sleep with someone I don't love. Love is a second-hand emotion. You're a beast. No isn't maybe. What is it about no? You don't understand. In a man's world, no is a yes. No! 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 Get in the chariot! David, you broke my commandment. Yes, but I conquered vast and rich lands for your chosen nation. Yeah, I'll spare you, but vengeance must be paid. I'll kill your seed.
wonder in the Google area there. Um, how about that King David, huh? Camp Security is off today, so we all need to keep an eye on him after the play. Some scary stuff. As you've seen, Yahweh's signature regime change still going strong. Two kings down, one to go. When you die, your son by another wife will murder me and our son Solomon. You promised to make Solomon king. Now be a man and do it! David does what he's told and Solomon succeeds him on the throne. Power, wealth, fame, and women. That's what a good life is about. Before I die, I want to settle all the family business. Bring down to the grave with blood those who cross him. A wise man doesn't quarrel with his benefactor. As Yahweh is a jealous God. You were a jealous king. You followed his example. And like you, I can't resist women. Oh. Oh. I love you, Dad. <laughs> now it all falls on me. Welcome, Pharaoh. I have witnessed the gigantic growth of your population and your power. I worry. You may abuse your astonishing strength. God has brought us to our present position of power for a great purpose. But Father, stop Israel at your border. Well, do you do the same? If you want things to stay as they are, you must do something for me. Okay, how about if I give you Gazara for a non-aggression pact? That's not enough. Okay. I'll break Egyptian tradition and will give you my favorite daughter in marriage. <laughs> now you're talking. She's lovely. I will annex Egypt into the promised land. <laughs> Let's drink. For a non aggression pact. <coughs> you will make me the happiest man in the world. Solomon, that's what you say to all your 700 wives. <laughs> I'll bet you've never told the truth to any one of them. In your eyes, we're all nothing but sex objects. Flattery won't get you anywhere with me. Well, come on. Let's have a good time. After all, love makes the world go around. You just confirmed all my dark suspicions about you. You married me for diplomacy, not love. I wish justice excited you as much as sex. What do you want? I want a temple for my golden cow. <laughs> it's yours. Where have you been? <laughs> I must keep a constant eye on things. My, my 12,000 horsemen and my, my 1,400 chariots. Last it, night I had a nightmare about a military coup. What do you want? It's degrading to be one of 700 trophies. Do you have a better alternative? You're uninterested in my intellect or my sense of justice. Keeping power takes all my time. You've no interest in treating me as a peer. Well, what do you expect? You came from Adam's rib. <laughs> you must build temple for my sun goddess and my storm god. Oh, can't your gods live in the same temple? <laughs> and sully their reputations? Well, I thought cohabiting was fashionable. <laughs> I don't have time to teach you fashion. All right, I'll submit to your demand. 
I should have stopped at a dozen wives like Dad. <laughs> Solomon, your heart is no longer perfect like the God of Israel. You're wrong. You built a temple to the God Milcom only for my Ammonite wife. It was a stroke of genius. It improved relations with the people of Ammon. Then you built a temple for Ashtoreth and Baal. I did it at the request of my Canaanite wife. Another stroke of diplomacy. A place of worship is appreciated by her people when they come to visit. You built a sanctuary for the god Chemo, for my Moabite wife, to create goodwill among her people. Listen, this isn't about diplomacy. This is about me. You scorned my two most important commandments. <clears throat> Your non-Hebrew wives turned you away from me. Abraham, Moses, Saul and David committed sins, but never, never did they forsake me for other gods. Conquering vast territories creates problems. It's tricky keeping the peace. And you fail. I am the only peace that matters. Our occupation isn't stable. We're not winning the hearts and minds of our people. They prefer their own rule, even when it's worse. So what? Well, force doesn't work. I mean, it only subdues for a moment. How can I rule a nation that I must keep conquering again and again? You killed your way into this problem. <laughs> but we can't kill our way out of it. We're slipping in all the blood we have shed. Stop whining. You broke your covenant with me. I've summoned your enemies. The promised land is going down. A withered nation you will be. Yahweh giveth with the sword, and now he taketh away. We fed our hearts on his vision, and our vision has grown brutal, and our hearts have grown brutal from the fair. We planted the seeds of our own destruction. Solomon, first you fought in self-defense, then you fought in defense of allies, then you invented allies to defend, and now you fight only for the sake of fighting. All history hath but one page. Chosen people build empires, pursuing the folly of limitless power and unchained ambitions. Why did you shrink Israel from 60,000 square miles to 6,000? What in the world got into you? Can you believe it? After bribing them with cities and towns that others had built, they disobeyed me. Because you treated them as mindless slaves. I'm ending my experiment with chosen people. What? I'm sending the Babylonian Empire in to take all of the land of Israel. Where, where will the Israelites live? In exile. And where will you go? It's too early to say, but I'm out of here. You failed three times. First with Adam, then with Noah, and now with Abraham. If you're so great, why did things turn out so badly? It's all their fault. There's no one to blame but themselves. You had the power to change your character and influence by example and chose not to. You must be held accountable. Let's ask them. We did nothing wrong. You condemned all mankind for a single innocent act that harmed no one. All we, we did, did was eat an apple. <laughs> Your flood was the worst mass murder in history. You inflicted collective punishment on Sodom. Why did you tell Dad to kill me? Look, 
Look, it's one of the 500,000 Egyptian firstborn sons. You wiped us out. Every man, woman, child, ox, sheep, camel, and ass. You murdered the 3,000 Israelites who were worshiping the golden calf. in 155 mass slaughters. I have an idea. Let's ask the audience to choose between you and me. That's fine with me. Let's let them decide why they are here. I used violence to prevent greater violence. Without obedience to me, there would have been a war of all against all. So, it seems we now agree that the chosen people are a scourge to mankind. People live for power, money, fame, sex, and security. That's right. That's why my order is the only thing that will work. But there can be no justice with limitless power. There's no alternative to me. It's like thinking you can repeal the force of gravity. You're wrong. Limitless power never works. It must be diffused and fragmented, checked and balanced. Ambition must be pitted against ambition. Then no one can command the power to oppress the non-chosen. You're dreaming. That combination of wisdom and character is very rare. It will appear far less frequently than Haley's comment. People will never make the intellectual and moral investment necessary for such a system. Seeking it's just not sustainable. Seeking justice is its own reward. The most splendid of sepulchres is where a person's inspiration remains eternal in the minds of the living and those yet to be born. There, on the right occasion to stir women and men to seek justice and to cast a light that will outshine all the heavenly stars as daylight doth the lamp. <coughs> this argument is over. I'm God, you're not. So what's it going to be? Moses or me? Justice or order? His way or Yahweh? <laughs> don't forget about me! I don't care about justice, and I certainly don't like obedience. Life's too short. I just want to have fun. Vote for me! <laughs> So that concludes Act 1 of Arguing with God, Challenge Kids, and the Play. You don't need to take notes for this part, sir. Now it's time to vote. Order, justice, or fun. All those who prefer order, raise your hands. <laughs> Thank you very much.